So what is advanced liver disease? Well, firstly, we talk about cirrhosis, where there's scarring of the liver, where the liver's a bit shrunken, it's lumpy, bumpy, and there's impacts of the flow of blood into the liver with consequences of that. But for people with the early stages of that, we call it compensated cirrhosis, where the liver function is normal and there are very few of any symptoms. Decompensated cirrhosis is where there are symptoms and signs and complications that are developing as a consequence of the cirrhosis. And the main ones we worry about are where there's fluid developing in the belly, which is called ascites, where there's rupture of veins that can develop in the lower esophagus or food pipe, where suddenly there's the development of severe bleeding, where there's vomiting of blood or passage of black bowel motions, or hepatic encephalopathy, where the toxins that are not being filtered by the liver build up and affect brain function. So there might be confusion, disorientation, or a change of personality, or in its worst forms, even coma. So people living with advanced liver disease really need to know what are the triggers that might tell them or their family member or loved one when they need to go to hospital and particularly when they need to call an ambulance and get to hospital urgently. Now the urgent things we worry about are infection, where there's a development of a high fever, shivering, shaking, vomiting, feeling really unwell. And infection is a major driver of worsening of liver failure and death. So if there's a severe infection, that might be a trigger for going to hospital urgently. Bleeding is another one. So the vomiting of blood, or the passage of black bowel motions, particularly where there's dizziness or feeling very unwell, is a trigger for urgent medical care in a hospital, and that's an ambulance. The other ones are where there's a new development of confusion or disorientation or personality change called hepatic encephalopathy. And particularly if someone's very drowsy and it's difficult to wake them, then that would be a trigger for calling an ambulance and getting that person to hospital. The sudden onset of belly ache in somebody with cirrhosis may suggest that there's a really severe complication such as blockage of a vein. So the main vein coming into the liver is called the portal vein and if that suddenly blocks, which it can do, then suddenly the, the gut behind it gets very distended and there can be severe abdominal pain or belly ache. So anyone who gets really severe belly ache in the setting of liver disease needs to be evaluated either by their GP or in the emergency department quickly if it's really severe. So for some people living with advanced liver disease, if we treat the underlying cause of the liver disease and manage the manifestations of liver disease, we can really improve quality of life and most importantly, length of life. However, some people living with liver disease, there is no cure and the liver disease will be progressive and will limit lifespan. And for people where they've got fluid in the belly or they've had bleeding or they've got hepatic encephalopathy or jaundice, their lifespan may be significantly impacted and they may only have 3, 6, 12 months or, or a little more to live. In that circumstance, your doctor should be considering referring you for liver transplantation. Liver transplantation is where we have a liver that's from a donor and we do an operation to replace your liver with that donated liver and it's life-saving. Survival after liver transplantation is very high. There are some complications associated with it which your specialist team would discuss with you but it's really life-saving. Now being diagnosed with advanced liver disease is not the end of the world. There are lots of things that you can do that can turn this around. Seeing your doctor regularly and having regular checkups is really important. But things that you can do at home, such as eating a good diet, getting regular exercise, stopping all alcohol consumption, losing weight, and taking your regular medications can all lead to a significant impact in how you're feeling with your liver disease and what's going to happen to you with your liver disease. We know that liver disease is reversible. So by stopping alcohol, improving quality of diet, improving your exercise and all the measures that we've talked about, you can actually reverse this and the liver can repair itself and regenerate and keep you healthy.